Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Worshipful Wednesday. It is that moment right in the middle of the week that we thank and praise God for the wonderful things he has done, that he will be doing, and that he is doing right now in our lives. Today, if you haven't done it, you ought to pause and just throw your hands up and say, God, I thank you for another day. Today, I invite you to look with me into Luke's Gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 12 through 19. Leading up to this, it begins to let us see a, a passage where Jesus eats grain with his disciples. And then Jesus heals on the Sabbath. And now right after that, Jesus does something that is so powerful. He has now set the scene. He has shown everybody who he is. And now he chooses his 12 apostles. This text begins to let us see that Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. And when he was there, he had prayed all night. It is important sometimes for all of us to have an all night prayer meeting, a time in which we spend our most consecrated hours with God. Jesus knew it was time for his earthly ministry and it was time for him to train other disciples. And he was about to choose these 12 men to become his apostles. Now, in the choosing of these men, Jesus had to hear from God. He had to make sure that God gave him and told him everyone that he was supposed to call and everyone that was supposed to follow. You see, we are not like Jesus. We don't get explicit commands and instructions from Jesus. We oftentimes pick people who we think we like, who are in our circle or who can identify with us that we'd like to become a part of our inner circle. Well, Jesus finds himself being in total submission to the Heavenly Father. He calls Simon. He gets Andrew. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was also called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, uh, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Well, Jesus called 12 men from varying various backgrounds, but he knew that God had something to do with each and every last one of them. Now, remember, as Jesus chooses these 12 men, there will be something uniquely that will happen in each and every last one of their lives. But Jesus calls them, and when he calls them, he gives them a simple command, follow me. You know, the question that I ask myself, do we still tell people to follow us as we follow Christ? Or do we just say, come and join us, come and be a part of what we're doing? I believe the caveat needs to be, follow me as I follow Christ. When you and I do what Jesus did, follow Christ, when we do what the disciples did, follow Jesus the Christ, it is then that we'll find out that men and women, boys and girls will follow us because they know we're following the Savior. Today, I want to ask you, are you truly following the Savior? I want to ask myself the question, am I following the Savior? You know, we sing the song where he leads me, I'll follow. I'll go with him all the way. But too often times we sing the song but it does not become personified in our actions, in our beliefs, in our activities. Today, we must ask ourselves the question, if we're truly following the Savior, that means we will do no harm to anyone. We will give everybody their rightful place in society. We will trust that God's hand is on everybody's life. And we don't choose people simply because they've been recommended by somebody else. You know, in this text, we need to make sure that we ask God, God, give me the people that you would have me to be around, that all of us together can work as one body in Christ to share the good news of the gospel. And then others will realize that they've been chosen as well. God, we thank you for choosing us. God, we thank you for approving us. Now, God, we ask that you would use us for thine own glory. Forgive us of our sins, our sins of commission and omission, and make us into the people that we should be. And then we will say, Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. This is Pastor Paul Anderson reminding you that you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And in this year of 20 and 23, God has a blessing bigger and better than you ever thought it would be. And take the Lord with you everywhere you go. And I look forward to talking with you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Oh,